Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be discussing decision tree analysis. We're going to be talking about the introduction as well as working through an example in order to hit home the core concepts. And so what I have here is a word problem that describes a typical situation that we might encounter in industry. We have to choose whether or not to invest in product A or product B. And so as we're reading through the problem statement here or the scenario, what we're going to be picking out is that if we go with the route of product A, we're going to spend 300 bucks to develop it but our risk analysis have told us that there's a 60% chance that it's going to generate 700 bucks for our company, but a 40% chance that it will lose us $100. And so that's product A. Uh, if we go with the path of product B, which I'll use a blue uh, ink to use, if we go with product B, we're gonna spend $500 to develop it, but our risk analysis or analysts have told us that there's a 70% chance of it, of it making us 900 bucks and a 30% chance of it losing 200 bucks for us. And so what our question is, is what is the expected monetary value of these two products? And so um, that's a new term uh, that we're going to calculate using our decision tree. And the question is, you know, which product should we invest in? Because we're gonna only have finite resources and we're gonna want to maximize our return on investment for our shareholders. So. Uh, you know, if you look at the surface of this and you, you know, you're just like, well, clearly, you know, we can make 900 bucks uh, if we go with product B, um, that looks a lot better than only making 700 bucks with product A, um, should we really go with product A? And so what we're going to be doing is first just diagramming the situation or the choices that we have. So we've got two choices. We've got product A and product B. And then we also have good and bad situations for each of these. So I'm going to have these two subsets pointing in either of these scenarios. And so what we know, if we begin to fill out the information that we've been told, is that the cost of producing product A is going to be $300. So I'm going to write minus 300 right here. And we know that the cost to produce product B is going to be 500. Um, so I will write minus 500 right there. In the good scenario for product A, we know that it will earn us $700. So I'm gonna write plus 700 right there. And we know that in the good scenario for product B, it's gonna earn us $900. So I'm gonna put 900 right there. And then for the negative scenarios in which uh, it's losing us money, we know that product A was going to lose us $100. And then we know that product B was going to lose us $200. And now the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in the actual uh, likelihoods of each of these scenarios happening. So for product A, our risk analysis told us that there was a 60% chance that it would generate us $700. So I'm going to write 0 0.60 right here. And for uh, the bad scenario, uh, that's going to be that 40% chance. So we're going to put a 0 0.40 right there. For product B, we were told that there is a 70% chance of it being the good situation. So I'm gonna put a 0 0.70 right there, and then a 30% chance of us having the bad situation, 0 0.30. And obviously, you know, this is a pretty uh, simple example because we're still learning this stuff, but in the real world, you know, there's gonna be a ton of other possibilities. And so um, these things can get a lot more complicated, but um, for the sake of getting used to decision trees, this is what we're gonna be going with. Um, and so basically the question that we're trying to answer here is what is the expected monetary value EMV for product A and for product B. So focusing on product A, what this will be equivalent to if I was to write this out generically, is we're gonna have the development costs of A, which I'll write as D sub A, and then we're going to have the probability of success, which I'll denote P sub S, and then times the uh, cost of success, so C sub S, and then we also have the probability of failure, which I'll write P sub F, times the cost of that failure, which will be C sub F. And so if we plug in these numbers, what I'll have is that the development costs of A is going to be minus 300, and then the probability of success for A was 0 0.6 or 60%, and then the cost of success here was $700, that's positive 700, and then the probability of failure was 0 0.4, and then the cost of that failure was minus $100, or us losing 100 bucks. And so if we were to add up all these numbers, what we are going to find 
is that we end up getting 80, plus 80. And I'll just try to write that clearly. And so what this number is telling us is that for product A, if we were to make infinitely many decisions and go with product A on every single one, on average, this would be netting us $80 in return for our choice. So that's what we know about product A. Now, if we go with product B, which I will denote as EMV sub B, the expected monetary value of B, this will be equivalent to that minus 500 bucks that we spent developing it, plus the 70% chance that it got us 900 bucks, and then plus the 30% chance that it got us that loss of 200 bucks. And this number is equal to plus 70 or $70. And so what this tells us is that when we look at the expected monetary values for both A and B now, is that product A in the long run will actually be returning us a higher profit or return on investment than product B. And so that is the reasoning why we went through this whole decision tree analysis, looking at both the positive and negative scenarios for both of these products in our decision. And so the conclusion that we're coming to is that because the expected monetary value of A is higher, if we had finite resources and we could only make one choice, our firm should move ahead with focusing on developing and selling product A. So that is going to wrap things up for this video. I hope it helps. Let me know if you guys have any questions and thank you all for watching.